Miranda O oh is the author of the Chin Up Tits Out series. She wrote her books based off of real life experiences that she had. And in her interview, she talks about some of her experiences and how they convert to writing and also some of the really cool ways that she's been able to promote her books and reach out and connect with her readers. My name is Miranda. I am in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, always have been. And I wrote my first book, I want to say like six years ago now. And um, I'm not going to lie, the last six years have absolutely blown by. Um, in that time, I've published three books and I'm writing on my next or I'm, I'm writing my next book. Um, it's uh, and like you, I'm a mom. I'm a new mom. My kids just turned a year old and this last year I had this like goal to write a book and publish it and and get it out in the world and I wrote like 3,000 words and I was like oh okay so like maybe my brain has been impacted by all of this change and um so I always laugh because whenever I have a story it comes out really easily um but it has to be the right time in my life when I wrote my first two books, I wrote my first two books um, back to back. So I think I published one and then, then 11 months later, I published the, another one. And, um, and then it was like three years, like a big three year gap. And people were like, what are you doing? And I said, I have to just experience my life in order to write the next one. Um, I hadn't lived the ending of my book yet. And so I needed that time. Um, and, and this as well, when I was preparing um, for my next book series, the one that I'm writing now, I had interviewed 100 women from around the world. Um, got, I got like 24 different countries, women from the ages of like 18 to 60. And each of those interviews were minimum an hour long. So it was like, a tremendous amount of research that I put in, into place for this. Then I developed all my characters and I did that, that all before my baby was born. And then I think about three months after she was born, I spent like two days writing. And like I said, when the, when the words flow, they flow like three days, three or sorry, two days, 3000 words. And I think the two days might've been like four hours total. So I just hammered it out. But then you know, I just didn't have time anymore. And so I'm, I'm kind of put it on hold, which is fine. Like life happens. And the best thing about self-publishing is that you're your own boss. So, um, you just kind of go with the flow and when, when you have time, the words will come. So yeah, I writing will always be a part of my life. I will always have stories. Life is a huge inspiring key for me. Um, so any big life change, I tend to take something out of it and turn it into a story and um, usually I have to go through it from start to finish and then process and look back and that's where my stories come from so writing about motherhood right now is just not something that I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to look back on that one day and and pull out some stories so that's a little bit about me and a little bit about my books but I can go into way more detail about my books books <laughs> Yeah, what was the first book that you wrote and what was the genre and what started, what inspired that book? So my first series, it's, it's a three book series, um, so the three books that I have out, it's called Chin Up, Tits Out. And the first book is called Remember No Matter What, Chin Up, Tits Out. And the second one is called When All, when All Else Fails, Chin Up, Tits Out. And the third one is Just Breathe chin up tits out so chin up tits out is very much a positivity mantra that you got to hold your head held high you got to put your shoulders back stand tall look confident on the outside even though you may not feel confident on the inside and that came from kind of a little mantra coaching like make sure you stand up tall and straight from my parents growing up but it turned into this little like joke chin up tits out when I turned into a teenager and it just kind of stuck so what inspired me to write that was me going through my 20s and going through a complete and utter like downward spiral in my life I fell madly in love and it was beautiful but it was messy and we had immigration involved we were 3,000 miles apart um it took a 
us years to actually be together. And there was a lot of stuff that happened. I was traveling to Africa once a year to go see him. Um, and like a white Canadian girl having no cultural experience <laughs> whatsoever, getting on a plane by herself and traveling to the literal opposite side of the world was a culture shock in itself. Like that could have been a, a story in, in itself. Um, dealing with immigration was a story in itself. Like, um, you know, I walked up to a Canadian embassy in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I got turned away. And I went up to this man and I gave him like my index finger and my other hand was on my hip. And I was giving him like this, what for? And he looked at me and was like, um, what are you doing? Like, I have a machete and I have a gun and you are coming at me and wiggling your finger in my face. <laughs> and I was like, you have to help me. I am a Canadian citizen. Um, anyways, so that was a learning, a huge learning curve for me. I really loved writing, rewriting that and just envisioning how naive I was. Um, and then when we actually did get, um, you know, my, my partner at that point, when we did get him here in Canada, we thought we would have our like happily ever after and, you know, have a house and have kids and have a white picket fence and, you know, like the picture perfect hap dream. Um, at least that was what my dream was. And it didn't happen. He was diagnosed with cancer and our lives spiraled out of control. We lost everything monetary, lost our cars, lost our jobs, lost our home. Um, and then one day he just picked up and left and I was left with nothing. There was, there was none of me left. I had given myself, I had given it all over the years and the stories, the three books very much go through the heated, fast paced love relationship that we had to the downward facing spiral tumultuous cancer journey that we had to the I'm left on six feet under, but still alive and having to pick up my life after that. So three very different stages of my life, but all within the span of about five years, seven years, something like that. And if you're going through any of that stuff, if you're falling in love with somebody from the other side of the world, if you are going through with an illness or an injury with somebody that you love, whether you are the patient or the caregiver, if you're going through a divorce or a separation or a loss of a loved one, there is so much relatability that I wrote about in this book. And I did it not only for myself because I needed to heal and there was a lot of reflection that needed to happen. I needed to reflect on the things and the choices that I made over the years. Um, that led me to have nothing left of me after, you know, our marriage broke down and all that fun stuff. Um, so I, I, I didn't make those mistakes again. I learned from that. So I really wanted to take an opportunity, not only to heal myself, but to connect with hundreds of millions of women that are going through so many different things, but could all relate to those feelings of loneliness and abandonment and putting yourself last over everything else but but showing you how important it is to put yourself first and that it's not selfish to put yourself first it's also it, it's, it's a necessity to put yourself first so there was a lot of learning for me but a lot of learning for the reader as well so it it's not a self-help book by any means it's a story it's it's oh I hear you. it's a page turner I think it's hilarious because you have these dark crazy intense moments but then you you read the main character's mind what's going on in her mind so you have this scenario that's dark and twisted and you're like oh my gosh this is intense but then her mind is is there but just trying to find this weird silver lining and sometimes when you're in a really dark corner your sense of humor is twisted and completely inappropriate and and so that's what this book is about is this little inner voice just coaching you to chin up tits out and find the silver lining and find the positivity in like the darkest of times and sometimes it's inappropriate and sometimes it's ridiculously funny and sometimes you just want to shake your head and go 
wow, I'm glad it's that person and not me. I've, I've, I've connected with so many people that have gone through something similar, whether it was the immigration piece, whether it was the cancer piece or, or illness piece, whether it was the picking myself up after a divorce or a separation or a loss piece. Um, so my story is unique. Yes. But the feelings that I was feeling are not unique. The feelings that I was feeling are what bring us together is that if you do have this feeling, Hey, don't worry. I know you feel alone, but you're not alone. And connecting with my readers in that sense was the thing that continued to drive me to do this was I loved the healing part of it. Sometimes it was messy and it was, uh, I was ugly crying while writing it, just reliving it and seeing the mistakes that I would call a mistake now looking back, but the choices that I made, I was doing the best that I knew how to, but I was learning, but then hearing people go, oh my God, I resonate with this. I I connect with this. I relate with this. I I feel you in this moment because I've been there too. But in my own experience, that was just the best feeling I could ever have. When like, even though I felt alone and there was a lot of alone time writing, a lot of alone time going through this, I felt more connected after it was all done. And I just, I love that part of writing. Yeah. How did you manage to connect with your readers? Was this through reviews that you got or, um, yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I I definitely loved reading the reviews, even the good and the like the bad ones. I was like, oh man, I I evoke some emotion there. Um, but I definitely have always driven my my readers to reach out to me on social media and 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 share with me. And I can't tell you the amount of like random Zoom conversations or random coffee dates that I've been with on with readers you're know, like you know I, I, I would go to a chapters for a book signing and somebody would pick up my book go read it and at the end of the book signing go like we need to talk about this like we need to talk about like do you have time for a coffee afterwards I'm like well you know Saturday afternoon don't really have much going on for a few hours like let's have a cup of coffee and just chat about it um you know family friends who are always supportive will reach out after reading and go like 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 I know who you are in this book and I know who the characters are because I know your family or I know your friends like I had no idea this happened and you know this happened in my life before and and you know I, I would love to just talk about it and compare feelings and compare this and and I just, I loved having that, um, whether it was somebody that I knew, whether it was somebody that I met at a book signing, whether it was a stranger that found me on the internet from a completely different continent. Um, I was, I'll, I'll never say no to a conversation, um, especially if it has to do with feeling relatable to what I've written. Um, definitely had people try to like pick me up from the books as well. <laughs> No, I'm I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> That's funny. It's been a a dating tool. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It definitely has, and it's been like a dating, not vice, but like it's kind of been a thorn in my side at times too. You know, um, I've had the odd person go like, "Well, because we're on a date now, like, do you think you're gonna write about me?" And I'm like, "Ew, no." <laughs> <laughs> like. Ew, funny. don't ask that question. Yeah. It was the ones that were completely genuine or the ones that were just too hilarious not to put in there to that go into the book. It's not like the one-offs, like we go on one date. I'm like, you don't make the cut, bro. So, sorry about that. That's so funny. <laughs> they just, they want to be in your book. <laughs> they want to get a chapter. Oh yeah, totally. Them. There are five seconds of fame to like, you know, little old me who's definitely you know, made a mark, but not made a, an entire impact on the world yet. And so, I mean, one day, hopefully I would love to, but yeah, no, we don't, we, we don't need to have five seconds of fame in my book. We're, we're okay with that. So, yeah. And <laughs> somebody actually came up to me, I was out for a coffee on a business meeting and um, <laughs> somebody like fangirled me and I was like, oh my God, are you Miranda? I'm like, yeah. Like your chin up, tits out, author. I was like, yeah. Wow. And they were like, oh my god and I was like oh hi um 
it's so nice to meet you. Like, I'm just going to go over here and like talk about not chin up tits out. Like it was like a corporate meeting. So it's, I have two very different worlds. I have my corporate world and I have my book world and um, they're very separate and I keep them very separate because I like it that way. Plus, you know, I got to pay the bills some way, shape or form. So uh, I was like, it just, excuse me for just a minute. And I'm like, thank you so much. But like, you got to scoot away now. <laughs> scoot That's away. kind of fun. They recognized you though. It was great. You know what? Honestly, like it made, it made me kind of want to squeal. And I think I might've squealed when I got home that day. Um, but it was like behind closed doors when nobody saw me. <laughs> So yeah, then I definitely had some fun time explaining that to my, my business meeting after that. <laughs> Can I ask what is your uh, corporate job? I am a training specialist for a corporate insurance company. I've been with a company for well, since 2015 and I guess right now it's 2022. So like seven, seven years and I'm not going to lie. I absolutely love it. I love my team. Team. I love what I do. Um, I train people across Canada and I make training modules and I'm continuously learning. And, you know, there was a time where my job was literally to travel across Canada and train in classrooms. Um, lo and behold, COVID happened. So it be all became virtual. And then all of a sudden I decided to have a family. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, maybe spending 50% of my time on the road isn't feasible for this part, part of my life. And, and that's okay. Um, one day it might pick up again and I might be able to travel and I'd absolutely love it. But um, when I was single and going through the healing journey and working the corporate job and taking my evenings and weekends to write um, and travel, like what better way to spend a you know, a hotel night by yourself in the middle of nowhere. Like there's only so much Netflix a girl can watch and so much gym time in a hotel that you can spend. So there was a, a, a lot of room service with wine and writing on my downtime. It was great. <laughs> well, that's like the greatest vacation ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, like anytime I hit an airport, I, even though I was going to like nowhere Saskatchewan or Northern Alberta or wherever I was going across Canada. Anytime I stepped into the airport, it was kind of like a vacation for me because, you know, you're not in the office. You're not doing this, like the same thing day in, day out. Um, you're going to really cool, small towns, sometimes big cities that I would never really travel to if it wasn't for work. Um, so it was really lovely. I really loved the experience and would totally be down to continue to do that. I would love to just do that everywhere across the world, but hey, one day we'll see. So after your first book was published, what did, uh, what did you do to share it with people and how did you get the word out for the first book? Um, the, what did I do? I had a book launch at a local bookstore and we put um, the publishing company that I was working for really helped me out. Um, somehow we did some sort of campaign and now I wish I could remember it. It was like a thunderstorm. I don't think that's the right word. <laughs> I think I'm butchering that somehow. Um, I, I don't know what it is called. Now it's going to bug me. I'm going to have to figure it out. But what happened was we were doing a bunch of pre-sale work and a bunch of like preemptive with this thunder stomp thing thunderclap nope I don't know what it is but anyways people were sh sharing their my my information on social media and whatever happened we set a date and a time and when that date and time went it all just went everywhere and I got a bestseller alert on my first 24 hours after my after I launched my first book and that was on yeah, that was on Amazon. So that was like absurd. It was like, it hit like a couple million people overnight. And, um, I pretty much fell over. It was insane. It was great. And then, um, shortly after that, I ended up working with a publicist who I met actually, who worked with me in my corporate job. 
Um, and we were talking about my books one night and he wasn't even a publicist. He had just worked in the book industry before he came into this corporate industry. And um, we started talking and I was like, you know, like after this, I didn't realize that like, you have to continue to market your book in order to sell your book. And like, like, how do I do that? Like, I can't just go into a bookstore and be like, hi, my name is Miranda. Here's my book. Like, do you want to sell it for me? Um, I mean, like I could, but I really had no idea. So after I guess some deliberating and, and some, you know, deep internal thought on his side, he's like, you know what, I'm going to help you. I'm going to, we're going to help, you know, like get this book out there. I'm like, okay, so what are you going to do? He booked me a Western Canada tour, like every single bookstore in all of Alberta, Canada, I was in, I swear it, it felt like that. It probably wasn't, but I was in, I think like 15 different bookstores in a few weeks. And it, like, I knew nobody in these towns and these cities, but I was set up right at the front, hand shook every single person. That sounds so weird now after two years of COVID, but like shook hands with every single person, said hi to every person, I sold a bunch of books. And um, I just sat there like dumbfounded and he just loved it. Like he was in his glory, just watching me do my thing, knowing that he set that opportunity up. And so he lived in a different province than me and we were actually working to get on some, some projects. So we would travel and, and talk in the car for like eight hours at a time. And so we had a lot of time together and after a few weeks, a few weeks after the, the Canada wide tour ended, um, he texted me and he's like, I think I'm going to start my, like a, a publicity uh, company on the side. And I was like, sweet, do it. Like, I'll be your client. Like hundred percent, I will pay you to continue to promote my book for me and promote me as an author. And, and then next thing you know, like five, six five years later, he's representing some of the top authors in North America. He has authors that he's representing around the globe. Um, he has found all of us opportunities, small opportunities to large opportunities and everything in between. Um, I've been on the cover of a magazine. Like I fell over when that happens. Um, I've been on TV. I've done blog posts. I've done video podcasts, audio podcasts. And I really all have to thank my publicist, Mickey Mickelson with Creative Edge for that, because if it wasn't for him continuing to work at promoting me, not only as an author and an artist, but also my books, but he really promotes me. And then he's like, then you go and you do you like, you're the best at that. I just set you up with the opportunities. Um, so that's really been my major source of continued promotion for the last six years is having a publicist that really believes in me and believes in my work. He, and he works with his authors one by one by one and is like, is so, like he works, everybody's different. And authors are quirky people, like we're artists, so we have to be quirky. Um, and he's equally as quirky and unique, but he works with everybody on an individual basis. You have a goal in mind, then he will help you achieve that. If you are not a good interviewee, he will work on it to make you a better interviewee. If you he, he helped me and one of his other authors start a podcast as well. And it turned and, and worked with us to become better interviewers. And then in turn was like, okay, well, if you guys do this, you work on this, you better yourselves here, tweak this, tweak that you're going to get more opportunities. Once you do what he says, you get better opportunities. And so like, honestly, having somebody like that in your corner is the biggest thing that you can have as an author. Um, I mean, unless you're some sort of influencer or a content creator that has a mass following by themselves, um, then your product will sell by itself because you've worked to get that. But I mean, I, I, I don't have a huge following. I think I have a few things thousand people on each of my platforms not millions not tens of thousands um would I love to one day of course yes but like 
for now, having a publicist in my corner and doing the business work to put me and give me opportunities like this is really what, what continues to drive book sales for me. I remember when I finished my first book, um, the publisher that I was working with said, congratulations, you're in the top 100, 1% of the world. 1% of the people in this world will write and publish a book. So you are now part of the 1%. And that I was like, oh, like that, that, that hit the heart, like that hit the heart real, real good. And then, so whenever I get a little bit down because oh, I, I didn't make any, a, a lot of book sales this month or didn't make any book sales this month, whatever the scenario is, I'm like, you know what? I still wrote the book, but having opportunities like this, being on blogs, being on TV, you know, having a plan for when you launch a book that gets you media is, is a huge asset. And at the end of the day, you're dealing with media is business and getting opportunities is business. And as artists, like you don't have the biggest artists booking their own shows. It's a manager or a XYZ person who's booking their shows for them. The artists just show up and do their thing. That's what they're good at. So I constantly have to remind myself that that's what Mickey does for me is he books the things for me and it's my job to now go and do me at these opportunities and to continue to create my content. Sometimes it's not as fast as I would like it. You know, I talk to authors all the time and they're pushing out three books a year two books a year, five books a year. And I'm like, I, I, I pushed out three books in six years, but I also pushed out a baby and I have a full-time job and I do a podcast. So like give yourself some credit. Nobody's for forcing you to do this more or less. Um, if it starts as a passion project, continue to use passion to drive that. Like don't, don't beat yourself up that it's not happening right here right now take the opportunity when it does arise um and 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 give your heart and your head a rest when it doesn't arise when you're like eyeball deep in life and just unable to create the words on paper it's okay um it'll come in time and I've really had to like coach myself through that over the last year um funny me when I was pregnant, I told everybody at work that I'd be back in six months and the six months that I would be off, I would have written a book and launched it in that time. <sighs> I went back after 10 months, like I said, and had not written a lot and told myself, it's okay. Now that I'm, at, I'm back at work, like I'm, I'm back in a groove with like, you know, a schedule so I can do it. No, because at the end of the day, when my kid comes home from daycare, I'm exhausted and I have like two hours to play with her, feed her, hang out with her. And then I have one hour to myself before I need to get ready and go to bed and start all again the next day. Um, and that one hour doesn't commute, compute or equate to good writing time. I need to take care of myself too. I need to sit down and let my body and my mind and my soul decompress from everything that I went through that day and mentally prepare for the next day to come. Um, so, Hey, when the time comes, I don't know when it will come, but it'll come and I'll, I'll hammer out my next three books, which is a full different series. And I'm very excited about that.